Um, and so it gives me great pleasure to introduce. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Chandra. Uh, first speaker on the perspective of um, the from the view of the view of atheism from a faith point of view. Uh, a little bit about our speaker who's going to speak after me after uh, this introduction, Mr. Muhammad Imran Muhammad Tayyip. He's the founding member of the Left Right Center, a dialogue initiative for young professionals. He's a seasoned interfaith activist with over a decade of experience dealing in issues of religion and society in Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Um, he writes contemporary pieces and his writings on religion, multiculturalism, and ethnicity have been published in The Straits Times, Today, Britta Haria, The Jakarta Post, The Malaysian Insider, and, and other uh, publications as well. He's trained in philosophy and the sociology of religion and has been labeled many things from reformist, liberal, even deviant, uh, none of which matters to him actually. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm reading this stuff, right? It's not my comment there. Uh, he identifies himself as a Muslim. Ladies and gentlemen, can we put our hands together to welcome Imran Tayyip? Thank you very much. Uh, do I need to use this? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'll just. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, Farid has mentioned earlier that we don't represent uh, any organization. Uh, and at the same time, um, there's no way that I can represent religion because it is such a huge scope. Uh, and there's so many different religions, of course, definitely. And I can't even represent Islam, the faith that I grew up and believe in. Yeah? So I'm going to speak as a person of faith who has been uh, raised and, and born in in a particular tradition uh, which I identify as Islam and that's going to be a perspective that I'm going to offer to you. Um, you know, but I must admit that as a person uh, who believes in God, uh, this is the first time that I'm engaging in a, in, a, in a dialogue of this kind with someone who does not, pros who profess not to have any belief in God. In fact, I find it ironic that sometimes atheists talk a lot more about God than even theists. Yeah? I mean, you look at some of the publications, uh, The God Delusion by Dawkins, uh, and um, uh, Sam Harris, and, and, and a lot of other atheist writers, they talk a lot more about God than even theists themselves. Uh, nonetheless, um, for my presentation, I will uh, have to define very clearly uh, the scope that I'm talking about, uh, because I find that it is important to have a very clear definition of what is being said Otherwise, uh, you might think differently from what I'm speaking about. And let's begin with this whole idea of religion. Yeah? I think we have to acknowledge that religion is a very problematic concept. Uh, because by definition, it's very difficult to pinpoint what exactly is religion. A lot of people are defining it as a belief system. But there are many things that is not religion, but has some kind of system of beliefs. Like Marxism is one example. Or some forms of religion emphasize rituals and practices and rather than uh, belief, which is inconsequential to, being, uh, to membership of a particular group. Uh, so that's problematic. Second way of defining religion, it concerns supernatural matters. Uh, but then astrology, feng shui, even Ouija board also concerns spiritual matters, but you don't really want to call them religion, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from uh, the, the 80s perspective, maybe, yeah. But uh, I doubt that uh, ordinary people on the street will say someone who plays Ouija board is a uh, believer in a particular religion. As a matter of faith, that's the third way of defining religion. But, uh, you know, we cannot prove or disprove many things, yeah. Uh, aliens is one thing, yeah. So does that categorize it itself as a religion? Or you can say that Justin Bieber is the greatest singer of all time now. There's no way you can prove or disprove it, right? It's a matter of belief, a yeah? matter of faith. So it's problematic. And faith and reason are not diametric, diametrically opposite, yeah? Uh, and this is how a lot of people sometimes see uh, religion and uh, uh, faith and reason as being opposite, yeah? Uh, I have faith that the world will not come to an end tomorrow, for instance, and that's perfectly reasonable, right? Although I cannot really uh, prove it. Uh, and faith and fact is also not diametrically opposite. Uh, having faith in Jesus, for example, does not preclude the fact that Jesus exists, which is a fact. 
Uh, faith in the Quran uh, does not preclude the uh, fact that the Quran is a historically significant text, uh, which is a fact. Yeah. Um, so it's also problematic to say that uh, religion is matters of matters of faith. The fourth way of looking at it is it provides meaning in life, but so do a lot of other things like nationalism. Yeah, it provides meaning in life that people want to go for a tour to know how a person lives his life privately, for example. And it's got nothing to do with religion. Yeah? Um, it concerns spirituality or spiritual well-being, but so does yoga, self-help books, even contemplation also. But certainly, it's not really religion, say, as how it's being understood. Or a lot of people, probably in the scholarly dimension, accept religion as a communal institution oriented towards a set of beliefs, ritual practices, and ethical or moral norms. But in today's world, there's highly individualized uh, forms of religion with no central authority or fluid practices, and that also challenges the very definition of religion. Perhaps religion is a convenient term to group these similar things, something like, for example, sea creatures. Yeah? There's no really essence of what sea creature is. Uh, you can, it's better definition than fishes, which breathe with gills, but then there's also mammals and whales and dolphins that, that doesn't breathe with gills, and then there's crustacean, and then there's amoeba, etc. So sea creature is a very, uh, uh, it's a category of dissimilar terms. Or maybe something like furniture. How do you define a furniture, for example? Yeah? It's very difficult. So what I'm trying to say is that all generalizations are necessarily problematic and inaccurate. And if the term itself is problematic, then the next step is to recognize the diversity across and within religion as a category. Uh, and not just creed and practices, but also differences in religious orientation. How does one account for the vast difference between religiosity of the Dalai Lama and Virantu? You know? or between Said Qutub and Abdul Ghaffar Khan, or between Jerry Falwell and Jim Wallace. Yeah, some of you might be familiar with this name, but they, come, they are from the same religious tradition, but diametrically opposite. Therefore, my point is that to be generous with religion and to avoid generalization. And this is something that I'm appealing to, to my uh, fellow atheist friend, uh, to avoid uh, uh, generalizations on religion and to be charitable with, with uh, assigning a certain characteristics to religion, yeah? Now, at the same time, I also want to be generous to people who profess not to have a religion. Just like I want them to be generous about religion, yeah? Now, I'm aware that many people have indicated having no religion for various reasons and variety of understanding of, uh, of what no religion might mean. But for the sake of discussion today, uh, I just want to be clear that I'm not talking about, number one, the humanist. Uh, because I see humanists as having two dimensions. There can be religious and non-religious humanism. Uh, and I identify humanism as an impulse that stems from religion itself. We say, for example, the development of Italian Renaissance was from Pico della Mirandola, who says, who says that I saw uh, from Abdallah the Saracen, which is a Muslim, how the dignity of man is uphold, etc. So that was the beginning of uh, European uh, humanism, at least. So there is some uh, religious impulse there, just like Badiyat, for example, is considered as a religious humanist. For many of the Enlightenment thinkers, they're not really atheists, yeah? Like Immanuel Kant, it's arguable, yeah? But he's trying to put religion within the confines of reason. Uh, or even existentialists, like Soren Kierkegaard. He is considered as a religious existentialist, yeah? Uh, I'm not also talking about the agnostics, no way of knowing whether God exists or not. Uh, and they can choose to believe or don't believe in the existence of the other world or supernatural dimensions. I'm not talking also about in, uh, with regards to the non theists You know, uh, people who believe in, for example, New Age spirituality, or even Buddhism has been identified as a non theistic religion. Yeah? Uh, I'm not talking about those who reject establishment religion or anthropomorphic reality, uh, and they remain uh, squarely a believer in a self-defined form of religiosity or non-religiosity. Maybe we can call this as free thinkers. Uh, and sometimes they are often confused as atheists. For example, the Muslim thinker of the 9th century, Al Ma'ari. Yeah, uh, uh, sometimes he's been identified as an atheist thinker within the Islamic tradition, but he's not really. Uh, he's a free thinker. Uh, I am discussing atheism, and within atheism, I, I, I see a spectrum also. And firstly, it's what I identify as implicit atheism. That means having no conception of God, supernatural being, 
So you cannot ask an implicit atheist whether God exists or not, since the answer is dependent on how the theist identify God in the first place. For example, if I ask you, does X, Y, Z exist? There's no way you can answer that, right? Because I have to define what I, I meant by X, Y, Z, right? So these are implicit atheism, yeah? But then there's also the second category of explicit atheism, and I'm not sure whether Tatsi is implicit or at uh, explicit atheism, yeah? We, we'll hear that later. But for explicit atheism is someone who explicit, explicitly rejects the belief in God. Now, this is where, how do I then see explicit atheism? Number one, if rejection is based on the definition of God as supplied by the theist, then I consider it as a weak form of explicit atheism since it provides no ground of its own. If the rejection is a priori, has a premise in itself, then my question is, how do you prove that God, God does not exist? Uh, and this is a sincere question that I'm asking an atheist, yeah? an explicit atheist. Now, let me explain using the principle of reason. Yeah? That there are things that can be reasonably proven, like the existence of atom that cannot be seen, but nonetheless its existence is scientifically ascertained, and we can call this as rational belief. And there are things that we cannot reasonably proven, like superstition believe that if I do a rain dance, then it will rain, for example, but can be proven that it's a mumbo jumbo, especially with more credible scientific explanation, and we can call this as irrational belief, if you insist to believe in, in, in such things here. Yeah? But there are also things that can neither be proven scientifically or disproven scientifically, and we can call this as non-rational. Now, how do you prove or disprove God's existence or otherworldly beings or life after death or whether the soul exists? Because to me, religion exists as a separate category from science. And science may provide explanation, religion provides meaning. And this is where I, for example, see Evan Prikat's uh, study on the Azande tribe uh, in Africa, yeah? where they know scientifically that the collapse of their wooden house is due to termites eating, but then they will still have an additional meaning to it. Oh, the termites are eating that uh, my house because someone sent a black magic to, to me. You know? So it's two different dimensions uh, that religion uh, or religious uh, explanation provide meaning, whereas it, it doesn't preclude um, scientific understanding of the world. And this may explain the resilience of religion despite scientific progress. Science did not banish religion, it banished the monopoly of truth and challenged worldly authorities like the clergy class if we see the rise of uh, atheism in Europe. Now, there is a subset within explicit atheism, and one of it is anti-theism, which perhaps many of us identify as uh, neo-atheism. Yeah? the Dawkins and Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens type. Uh, not mere rejection of God, but rejection of entire system understood as religion. But not just a rejection, but an attack on religion has basically the root of all problems and not making a distinction between the different types of religion as I've identified just now. Um, I quote, for example, Hitchens who said, I am not even an atheist so much as I'm an anti-theist I not only maintain that all religions are versions of the same untruth, but I, told, uh, but I hold that the influence of churches and the effect of religious belief is positively harmful. So this is an anti theist position within the subset of this big thing we call atheism. Yeah? Now, Hitchens and his likes represent one to me, yeah, to an extreme form of atheism that not only generalizes all religion, but fail to account the foundation of civilization that we are living in today will not be possible without the contribution of religion. Uh, Dawson, for example, Christopher Dawson, who is a very famous, uh, uh, notable historian, uh, remarked, and I quote here, Faith looks beyond the world of man and his works. It introduces man to a higher and more universal range of reality than the finite and temporal world to which the state and the economic order belong. And thereby, it introduces into human life an element of spiritual freedom which may have a creative and transforming influence on man's social culture and historical destiny, as well as an uh, on his inner personal experience. If therefore we study a culture as a whole, we shall find that it is an intimate relation between religious faith and its social achievement." Uh, unquote. So without religion, one cannot imagine the development of law, development of institutions, moral codes, etc. in modern society that we take for granted today. Even the emergence of capitalism, as uh, noted by Weber, uh, is based on what he called the pro Protestant ethics, which the foundation of it is still religion, i.e. Christianity. 
some of the voices pushing for progressive ideas and civil rights uh, ideas were and continue to be inspired by religion. And I'm quoting from people like Gandhi, for example, to Martin Luther King, or Desmond Tutu, Thich Nhat Hanh, Dorothy Day, etc. These are people who are driven by the religious impulse to contribute towards the promotion of human good. So how is religion sui generis the problem? As what uh, is asserted by the entities here. Yeah? Last but not least is what religion offers. And more than any other theologians, Ernst Bloch, uh, who is a German philosopher of the 20th century, despite being an atheist himself, identifies the religious foundation of hope. Atheism, historically, is a culmination of diametric explanation for the fact of suffering. And suffering itself is the foundation of all major theologies. Think of Buddhism, that begins as a reflection upon suffering, right? He saw, uh, Buddha saw. Uh, death, illness, and old age. Uh, or Islam, uh, on the oppression towards uh, women and children, etc., in its early uh, inception. Christianity, the fact of Christ suffering on the cross. Uh, or even Judaism, on the promised land and, being, uh, and, and suffering in, 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 in uh, Egypt. But instead of the faith of Job, you know, Prophet Job, who was given a lot of calamities, uh, and he was very steadfast in his uh, patience towards God. Uh, it, this, uh, it's interesting to see the development of the rebellion and the angst of Job's wife, uh, who said that, you know, uh, curse God and let's die. Yeah? Uh, so it's a diametric uh, response con compared to Job, and she was no longer mentioned in the Bible after that. Yeah? Uh, she has no name in the first place. Yeah? But, some writer says that she is the beginning of what we call misotism, the anger towards God for the fact of suffering and injustice. Hence, atheism emerged to offer solution to the question of God's responsibility for injustice and suffering by simply denying God's existence. Uh, this is the Epicurean paradox, if you know, uh, and I quote here, God either wants to eliminate bad things and cannot, or can but does not want to, or neither wishes to nor can, or both, can, but, uh, sorry, or both wants to and can. If he wants to and cannot, then he is weak. If he can, but does not want to, then he is spiteful. If he neither want to nor can, he is both weak and spiteful, so not a god. If he wants to and can, which is the only thing fitting for a god, where then do bad things come from? And, or why he does not eliminate them? This is a problem of evil and suffering that remains a formidable challenge to all theists today. Now, for Bloch, Ernst Bloch, uh, a completely a-religious atheism implicitly denies that the world can be changed. This is uh, what he identifies as vulgar atheism. Yeah. But the present state cannot be everything, and resistance in itself had a religious element because it presupposes a utopia of a different world. Hence, hence uh, Ernst Bloch's famous dictum, where there is hope, there is religion. Fact of suffering plus hope is the foundation of religion that provided the impetus to cultures that built civilization as we know it. One may see this from a religious lens or a religious language or from a deeper impulse that is nonetheless of the same wellspring that pushes humanity beyond the now and here. Even among the rebels of God, like Rebecca West or Ellie Wiesel, those who display an anger towards God over the fact of suffering, and we call this misotism, that impulse stems from a response to what Tillich calls Altilic, the Christian theologian, called the ultimate reality or the ground of being, which some of us call God. Misotism is an important element in the development of calls for greater justice in the world. So even if you are angry towards God or towards religion, we can come to a common position to the source of death, which is injustice, suffering, hate. You may think that religion causes it, and I can agree uh, to that and say that that is a form of a broken religion. But let's fix it together. Because as a person of faith, religion is not about injustices, suffering, and hate. Religion is a source of good, of justice, of compassion, of love, charity, and human flourishing. So I humbly submit that religion had caused some of the problems of the world, but it's not religion per se, but it's how uh, Peter Vardy calls it, bad religion, or has uh, said by Kimball, when religion becomes evil. Uh, hence, atheists have something to say, and these people of religion must listen attentively. But let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater and acknowledge both ATs and Ts have a role to make things right in this world. Thank you.
Thank you.